Alright, first off, wow, I did not expect this many views, or this many subscribers. I mean, seriously, back in kindergarten, I got made fun of for talking about Spider-Man. Now it's the only thing everyone's talking about these days. So thank you again to everyone who watched my videos. It really means a lot to me. But you know what also surprised me? The amount of people that actively supported Ultimate Spider-Man. I mean, I get it. People grew up watching the show. So did I. I can remember seeing an ad for this back in 2011 and thought, Wow, they're making another Spider-Man show? I have two Spider-Man shows to watch now. Well, little did 10 year old me know that things would be changing. You see, for those who don't know, Sony had the rights for Spider-Man and was making a lot of money because it was Spider-Man. Disney of course wanted in on that, so they made a new deal that got them TV rights and more, but Sony still had the movie rights, even to this day. So Disney decided to cancel Spectacular Spider-Man and made a new show called Ultimate Spider-Man. This was the start of Marvel's animated universe or whatever you wanted to call these shows, and was also part of the reason why Earth's Mightiest Heroes got cancelled. While I did like the show when it started, I eventually grew to hate it, and would always complain that this was the worst Spider-Man show ever. But upon rewatching every Spider-Man show, and reviewing the latest one, maybe I've been too harsh on the show, and I need to look at it in a new perspective. So let's ponder the question and ask, is Ultimate Spider-Man a good show? We start off with Spider-Man getting yelled at by Jameson and fighting bad guys as usual. That is until Nick Fury shows up and this is where things start to fall apart. What? Already? Okay, I know we just started, but hear me out. Spider-Man joining S.H.I.E.L.D. is detrimental to his character and is the exact thing people complain about for MCU Spidey. And I know in the Ultimate Comics he was pretty close to Nick Fury, but never at this level of becoming a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And it's at this point where you should stop calling this Ultimate Spider-Man because this show is nothing like that. The only reason why this is called Ultimate Spider-Man is because they keep saying it. What's it gonna be, Spider-Man? Are you okay with just being amazing, or do you want to be Ultimate? I'm figuring out this whole Ultimate Spider-Man thing. Your friendly neighborhood Ultimate Spider-Man reporting for duty, sir! So after stopping the Frightful Four from attacking his school and realizing he can be better, he joins S.H.I.E.L.D. which also means he has a team now to work with. Alright, so let me take a moment to talk about this. In the comics, Spider-Man has always been known as a loner and pretty much works by himself all the time, which is why he's never been in a team for 43 years. But the main reason why he's a loner is because Spider-Man was very popular and the Avengers were not. To put it in comic book terms, when you have one character that everyone loves, then you give them their own comic book because everyone will like them. When you have a character that doesn't sell, then you put them in some random team and hope that sells. This is a method that's still used to this day, and why people keep writing Spider-Man out of the Avengers. While I do like Spider-Man doing stuff on his own as much as everyone else, I also like seeing him team up with other heroes, and this show decided to change the formula and gave Spider-Man a team to work with this time. Which also brings up the problem of... Uh oh! No! Something's different! You need to make stuff different, or else that character will get boring. That's why I like the MCU and the PS4 game, because they are different from what I've been seeing for the past 17 years. Plus, if you get to try and top Spectacular Spider-Man, you need to bring something new to the table. But if that's the case, then why doesn't his premise work? Well, for one, S.H.I.E.L.D. is interfering with Peter's life, and I know that's their literal job, but they control his high school so there's no risk or any normal high school life, and they give him a bunch of gadgets that he doesn't need. And I know you're gonna say Tony does that too, but he doesn't give Spider-Man a motorcycle so they can have a reason to sell toys. In fact, when you think about it, S.H.I.E.L.D. does this exact thing in Far From Home, and even Peter is annoyed about it. 
Literally any social drama or problems that can affect Peter or Spider-Man's life can immediately be solved by a click of his watch. All the relatable parts of Spider-Man are now gone from the show. And it's arguably worse than Horizon because at least they didn't know everything about him. But what about the team we just mentioned or any of the other characters in the show? As mentioned, Spider-Man has a new team featuring Power Man, Nova, White Tiger, and Iron Fist. Now I love these characters and I know that each of them are capable of having their own shows. But unfortunately, some of them are ruined here. Nova from the show is annoying, hot-headed, and is constantly fighting with everyone. Nova from the comics is nice, respectful, and always trying to help everyone in need. They didn't even get the costumes right. They based it off of Richard Ryder and didn't fix it till season 3. Luke Cage's origin is completely ruined. From a man who was raised in a rough area, in prison, and was given his powers to someone trying to kill him, to his parents being S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and gave him a super soldier serum. Again, proving how S.H.I.E.L.D. is ruining these characters. Thankfully, White Tiger and Iron Fist are pretty much the same, just with a few different changes. And they're actually fun to watch. Alright, so that's 2 out of 4 done right. Maybe next time they can improve on this concept and- wait, never mind. Speaking of S.H.I.E.L.D., we also have Agent Coulson, who is always great, as well as Nick Fury, despite my gripes with his interventions. Even Dr. Connors is in the S.H.I.E.L.D. and has his arm, so that's cool. Like I said before, Midtown High is literally run and modified by S.H.I.E.L.D. So any tension of villains attacking school is gone. However, we still have Peter's supporting cast like Mary Jane, who's voiced by Tara Strong. And wants to be a reporter for the Daily Bugle like the Ultimate Comics. She's basically like the PS4 Mary Jane, but without any of the romance. That's right, there's no romance in this show whatsoever. I mean, come on, really? Even a 2017 show got this right. Harry, voiced by Matt Lanter, THE Anakin Skywalker, is a little better than a 2017 show, but is still annoying later on. Flash is also voiced by him too, and he's actually a character this time. Even Aunt May is more prominent and more outgoing. Almost all of Peter's supporting characters are good, all except for Jameson. So I mentioned last time how Jonah is a deep character that anyone could write an essay about, but what does this show do? They just stick him on a TV screen and just yell at everyone. That's it. No daily bugle, no photography, none of that. All gone so he can become a stupid running gag in the show. And the worst part about this is that they got J.K. Simmons to voice him. That's right. D.J. Jonah Jameson. And all you do is make him sit in a chair for four seasons? What a huge waste of potential. Honestly, I just think this guy is too scared to face Spider-Man. Maybe if he got out of that stupid chair, he could- oh, no! Okay, never mind. We're, we're fine with him just sitting down. So what about Peter himself? Peter is voiced by Drake Bell, and well, that's a whole lot of mess. Hola! Donde esta la biblioteca? He was a huge fan of Spider-Man, and he voiced them for a pretty long time. For many, Drake Bell was their favorite Spider-Man. However, I hate his voice and think he's the worst Spider-Man. Okay, so maybe he's not the worst one? Where's Cage and his search party? Oh. The civilian volunteers! Pretty redhead, arm and aghast! Ah, you are no help! But he's still not my favorite. His voice is so annoying and screechy, which I know is weird to say compared to the last one, or even my voice, but I hate it whenever he screams. Another thing I hate about him is the fact he keeps breaking the fourth wall just to talk to the audience. He does this every five minutes like Dora, just constantly interrupting the episode just to make sure the kids are falling. But to be fair, he was good in Earth's Mightiest Heroes because of the smart writing in that show. Which brings me to the writing of this show. Disney aimed this show at smaller audience, but they forgot that adults watch these shows because they have nothing better to do. I know it looks weird when complaining about writing in a kid's show, but just remember Avatar, Teen Titans, or Adventure Time. Remember how good the writing for those shows were. I mean, do you really want your kids to watch Teen Titans Go all day? My belief is that age is not an excuse to dumb down writing. Kids deserve shows with great writing. This is still important to this day. I mean, you can have your little junior shows, that's fine. But jokes like this? Him down. 
Make me. I think I have the same conversation in the second grade. Yeah. Make me. Or a waste of time. Which is what I've been doing till now. Because it's rant time. So Spider-Man wants to impress Nick Fury, right? So he decides to go after Dr. Freaking Doom. Do I really need to say why that's a stupid plan? <laughs> Spider-Man never gets the black suit and becomes Venom instead. But yet, Harry gets the black suit and becomes the Venom of the series. So, the series just ditches Eddie Brock and Harry's Venom. Which is an interesting idea, but this happens three times so the idea quickly gets old. Why would you make a found footage episode? That just makes everything harder to watch. No one does this anymore. Believe it or not, the only story that the show adapts perfectly from the comics is the story where Spider-Man and Wolverine swap bodies. Arguably the worst story from Ultimate Spider-Man. They even included the pervert joke. Baby, I do like me a redhead. Also, of all the James Bond references you can make, why this one? Hey, remember when the 2017 show just killed Sandman in the first episode? Well, now he's just a crazy nut job with no character whatsoever. Don't worry, I got this. Now I'm gonna write a new ending to your stupid play, kid. I'm gonna grab the ropes and stuff to make it look less real. Just keep playing. We don't want to panic. Wait, so you're keeping the play going because your free trap master will hurt someone? Seriously? Trap master? No wonder you need training. Okay, I've been saying a lot of bad things so far. So let's start saying some good things right now. So Norman Osborn wants to learn how Spider-Man works so he can create a private army to use. With Doc Ock's help, they try to throw everything at him and are the main reason why most of these villains are attacking. It's a pretty good story that doesn't overstay its welcome, unlike the 2017 did. And the bad guys are great themselves. Norman Osborn has a great motivation to go after Spider-Man and his build-up to becoming Green Goblin is well done. See? That's how you do it! Doc Ock is also wonderfully done. Who knew Spongebob can make a really creepy villain? I actually like that Spider-Man fights other villains rather than his own rogues gallery. It's always fun seeing Spider-Man take on the D-listers. I love the superhero squad reference they made. I always wonder as a kid why Spider-Man never appears, but yet he was in the games. The Doctor Strange and Flash episodes were cool, but I weirdly like the Homesick Hulk one. Probably because Spider-Man is in a situation where he can't call S.H.I.E.L.D. and has to juggle watching Hulk and Aunt May. It's a classic sitcom of Spidey's life that's missing from the show. Plus, there was an episode where Spider-Man Captain America had to stop Doom, which was literally based on a video game. And you know what? Even though there are episodes obviously advertising the MCU, they aren't forced or shoved down your throat, so I'm thankful for that. Of course, I have to mention this, the animation is actually pretty good. The fight scenes are great and fun to watch. Mostly because, get this, it has shading! The last two episodes are great because we finally see Green Goblin, and not only is it Ultimate Goblin, but it's also a mix of normal Green Goblin, which is much better than how Ultimate Goblin normally is. So I applaud the show for doing that. And we get to see Peter being the hero we know him as. So after Goblin destroys the Helicarrier, Peter has the team move in with him, which is kind of like the comics actually, and thus marks the end of the first season. While the writing is painful and jokes are bad and some of the episodes are questionable, I can respect the story that they set up and some of the changes they're making. They definitely made a different kind of Spider-Man show, so let's see how season 2 fares. Season 2 starts by building up the Sinister Six with Lizard, Electro, which was Spider-Man's dumb fault, Rhino, who's just a kid, again, Kraven that has a tie with White Tiger but then forgets about it so it's kinda pointless, and Beetle. All this leads up to a fun episode and didn't take them forever to assemble. <coughs> the Goblin starts to experiment with symbiotes and we get to see Carnage and Venom again, but thankfully for the last time. Then we have a fun episode where Goblin starts infecting a new helicarrier with symbiotes. Again, doing it better than the 2017 show. And only in one episode! Man, there are a lot of good story episodes for season 2, but surprisingly not that many. 
so what about the small episodes? Well, I'm not gonna make another rant time, so let's just call this, um... Ah, here we go. Let's call this the good, the bad, and the okay ones. The Iron Fist 1 was better than anything Iron Fist ever gave us. They did another body swap episode, but with Hulk this time, and it was actually good. The Guardians 1 was fun because this was way before the movie came out, and of course, I had no idea who these guys were. The Game Over 1 was also another reference to an old Spider-Man game. I can see whoever wrote these episodes grew up in the 90s. And of course, the best ones were Deadpool and Stan Lee. Deadpool was voiced by the Ron Stoppable, and he killed it as Deadpool. The Stan Lee one was like reading an old Spider-Man comic that Stan wrote himself. We even have an entire fight narrated by the man himself. As, and I know only one word to describe him, the amazing Spider-Man, battling a handsome lizard in one of the most daringly dramatic Teslas to date. The very soul of the high school resting in his heroic hands, Spidey puts the fix on his cold-blooded adversary. As for the bad ones, well, the Boston one was just... why? And we literally have an episode where the team fights a house. And just when you think that's the stupidest thing you ever heard, we have an episode where little Spider-Man fights the Destroyer. Are you guys high? The okay ones were Man Wolf, which could literally be cut out and nothing would change, the Halloween special, and the Sandman one, which tries to give him more of a character, but at the same time gives him the worst costume he had in the comics. Seriously, why? Alright, back to the story. So Norman gets cured and decides to change his ways by being an Iron Patriot. Now Norman has never changed his ways. Like, ever. So this is a pretty interesting change and I like that they kept this Iron Patriot identity instead of giving it to War Machine. Eventually we learn that Doc Ock is reforming the Sinister Six again and everyone tries to stop him. Spider-Man ends up beating them on his own, but Otto injects Norman with the Goblin Serum again, and he quickly infects the rest of Spidey's team, and finds a way to threaten the city. Man, this guy is fast. Even had time to build armor. After Spider-Man beats Green Goblin, the Avengers want him on the team. Alright kid, you're an Avenger now. So yeah, Season 2 improves on a lot of things and keeps the story interesting. Again, other than some skippable episodes, I really liked how the season turned out. And you can imagine how exciting it was as a kid to finally see Spider-Man on the Avengers. So with all that set up, you think Season 3 would be even better, right? Nope! Doc Ock and Loki team up to create another symbiote army, just like the last one, but with Asgardian creatures, and Spider-Man decides not to be the Avengers, which lasted for two episodes. Yeah, that was a disappointment. <laughs> we then learn that there's a whole new generation of superheroes that S.H.I.E.L.D. is interested in. Now having new and young superheroes for Spider-Man to train can work and sometimes not. But the potential here is great with Miss Marvel, Kate Bishop, and Miles Morales. You could have a great team here. So what do we get? Agent Venom. Alright, sure, I guess that can work. Kind of rushing Flash's character arc of being in the military and losing his legs and learning how to be a better person, but sure. Although I hate how he don't get his guns. I know it's a kid's show, but he did it for Deadpool. Cloak and Dagger, except they're on the opposing side. Amadeus Cho, who basically steals his Iron Inspire suit and is super annoying. And Kazar? Really? F Kazar? You had these options and you picked Kazar? They all formed the New Warriors and are immediately attacked by Taskmaster's team, whose sole purpose was to break Green Goblin out, making him the main villain for the third time. Goblin's secret plan is to travel dimensions and gather samples from different Spider-Men to make himself even more powerful. That's right folks, we're getting a Spider-Verse event. Now remember, Spider-Verse was a comic book that was inspired by the video game and was happening right then, so it made sense to do this. Plus, this Spider-Man made an appearance in it. So we get some fun episodes with Spider-Man 2099, spider Girl, but not Mayday Parker, instead it's just a gender swap version of Peter, so that's a bit weird, Noir Spider-Man, but not Nicolas Cage, 
Spider Ham, but designed wrong. Seriously, you could have just reused this from season one. Spider Knight, but way cooler than the comic. And of course, Miles Morales, who's voiced by Donald Glover. Pretty good choices for this event, but definitely could have replaced Spider Girl with Spider Gwen. Goblin ends up transforming into a monster, and with the help of the Web Warriors, they beat Goblin and Electro at the last minute. And Norman is finally cured for good. For a short tie-in event, this was honestly really fun to watch, and we'll hopefully get this in No Way Home. However, we still have some other episodes to cover, so I believe it's time for another rant time. Agent Coulson is gone because of a better TV show, and Stan Lee is now the principal. Yet we never see this. Vulture is an emo kid that looks like Emo McGuire cranked up to 11, and we get a Halloween crossover episode with, and I can't believe I'm saying this, Jesse. Jesse, the Disney Channel show you watch way too many times. I mean, who made this? It's also at this point where we start to lose track of the original team and completely forget about them for the new ones. I loved how the reason for Spider-Man quitting the Avengers was for them, but now it ignores them for the new guys. Two seasons worth of episodes, all for nothing now. Well, I'll say this. I did like the one part of the Christmas episode where we get 60s animation. I would totally watch an entire episode of this. Unfortunately, the show decided to go one more step with the whole shield idea with them building the Triskelion so the new heroes can go to school and learn stuff. So Peter no longer goes to Midtown High anymore, and Peter Parker's story is now gone. We literally don't see him without the costume for 7 episodes. He eats and sleeps in it 24-7 now. This is disgraceful and an atrocious take on the character. Not with the big words again. The most important part about Spider-Man is Peter Parker because that's what makes him human and relatable. This is a hero you could feel comfortable to walk in his shoes and understand what he's going through. That's why everyone cosplays as him, because they feel so attached to his relatability. I can get the whole trying to improve himself and be better, but ignoring his friends and Aunt May, he literally pointed out how he doesn't hang out with Harry anymore, but ignores that because this show is basically turning into DC Superhero Girls. The next few episodes deal with Rhino joining, a body invasion episode, sneaking out for a burrito, and the Inhumans. Yeah, remember when Marvel was hyping them up? We also get Arm Zola as a main bad guy, but he was set up in one episode and this was all Amadeus' fault to begin with. Then he comes back with a goo army and has a one-on-one -on -one battle with Spider-Man. I know I said I like seeing Spider-Man fight other villains, but him fighting Zola feels so out of place. This would feel better if it was Captain America instead. Alright, so the last few episodes are based on the Contest of Champions, which was a comic, but is more recognized as that mobile game you probably played on the bus. The Collector and the Grandmaster both hold the contest with New York City as the game board, and since Spider-Man and the Collector have already met, he's his main character. It's a fun event that also has some very personal stakes, and even brings Aunt May into it, and reveals that she knew he was Spider-Man all along, something a Spider-Man show has never done. Man, this season has been very mixed in terms of quality. We've had two good events, and the rest just being <laughs> Thankfully, we only got one more season to go. Let's get this over with. Okay, first off, that's a mouthful. I let Web Warrior pass, but this is just too much, even for a comic book title. So just when things are going great for Spider-Man, Hydra attacks and enlists Doc Ock who gets an upgrade? Seriously, you call this an upgrade? And we get the reveal of Scarred Spider. Yup, we're gonna get the Clone Saga now. So he pretty much comes out of nowhere and comes off as this loner who doesn't hang around people. So let's put him in a team, shall we? Yeah, Spider-Man trusts him way too easy, and even Flash isn't dumb enough to fall for it. So Hydra is now a main problem for Spider-Man, which is rarely his concern. Honestly, after watching these shows, I'm kind of tired of seeing Hydra all the time, and this just feels repetitive at this point. To speed things up, we get Miles back and stuck in this dimension because he was starting to get popular in the comics. While that's great and all, it's ruined by the fact that Donald Glover couldn't come back to voice him. So they just got Luke Cage's voice actor to villain, and he's not that great. Who else is 
else would it be? Unless you know some other superhero who spins webs and sticks to walls and is late for a very important date. I already miss Najee Jeter. That's the voice I always hear when I'm reading the comics. I also hate how they make Miles another version of Peter with him doing the exact same movements and jokes. Again, Miles is his own person and not just a black version of Spider-Man. It gets even worse when they decide to rename him to... But Spider-Man and his kid arachnid. Oh, I want to destroy them personally. Kid arachnid? That's not... Not bad, actually. What do you think? Do I look like a kid arachnid to you? What? That's worse than Spidey. Why? Just... Does he at least act differently than the last show? Place feel a little odd to you guys. No, not at all. If we're in a horror movie. Okay, I know a haunted house when I see one. There are no such things as ghosts. Shh, the ghosts will hear you. Ah, <sighs> never mind. So we get Venom again because we're running out of ideas at this point. Amadeus starts turning into a killer at one point because that's totally what he would do. Sandman finally gets some character building. It took four seasons for this guy to have a story, while it took 10 minutes for the 2017 show. Harry is now a superhero and wearing his lame armor from that one storyline, until he turns to anti-Venom. So basically Venom AGAIN! Oh yeah, don't worry about the other people living in those houses, just get Aunt May out first. Oh, and they named Scarred Spider Ben Riley, even though that's not him, but Kane. But who cares, I guess, just mess up the one consistent part about the Clone Saga. And to top it off, we get possibly the worst Halloween and Christmas episodes of the entire series. So after all the buildup, we get the Sinister Six attacking S.H.I.E.L.D. But it's been suspected that there's a mole in S.H.I.E.L.D. So guess who could possibly be? Is it the guy we just met in the first episode? Or it's the guy we just met in the first episode? <laughs> His name is Peter Parker. Ah, nice to finally meet you, Peter Parker. <laughs> no! So Spider-Man is unmasked and Doc Ock tries to steal this key thing that Peter hid in Aunt May's house. I don't know why he did that in the first place because Doc Ock attacks her. Ben feels guilty, so he stops Doc Ock by sacrificing himself. No, for real guys, Ben is totally dead. Oh, and by the way, barely any consequences of Otto knowing Peter's identity, except for one threat at the end, but that's it. All right, so what's the next event? Oh, great, another symbiote event. Yup, Hydra brings Carnage to life, because of course it was Hydra. And yes, they did this before in season two. We get Carnage Ock for a bit, and then Carnage explodes and spreads all over New York, so it's maximum Carnage now. So the only way they beat him is with Anti-Venom, which involves Peter revealing his identity to Harry. So they stop Carnage and save the city, right? Wait, it's not over because Mary Jane, who hasn't been in this season till now, turns into Carnage too, and Peter has to reveal his identity again! Man, he really is Ultimate Spider-Man! Feeling a little overwhelmed with Hydra and Carnage now at this point, right? Well, too bad because we're getting Spider-Verse again. So, for no reason at all, they go back to Spider-Verse, not for the movie that would be out two years later, or the sequel to the comic event. Yeah, you forgot that happened, didn't you? Probably just to sell more toys. Nick Fury and Madame Web, not the one from the 90s show, the new one that no one cares about, revealed that the magical MacGuffin from last season was broken and, wait a minute. The tablet of order and chaos is the most powerful of all the mystic artifacts in the world. And you shattered it. Yeah, sorry about that. Guess they don't make tablets like they used to, huh? The pieces are now fragmented across other dimensions. Dimensions that are strange reflections of our own. They just copied the plot of Shadow Dimensions! So Peter and Miles travel together and they meet Blood Spider. A pirate Spider-Man, cowboy Spider-Man, noir Spider-Man, again, and Spider-Gwen. We finally get Spider-Gwen and she's done perfectly. So this is my world, right? It is, and it's really good to have you back. So, web shooters. Digital, spider sense, gloves, and boots with magnetic grips. You created tech-based spider powers for yourself? What? So she doesn't have any powers? 
this isn't her world, but Miles instead, and Anne May helps her like Alfred? What the f***? You had one job, the easiest job, and you immediately mess up the most popular character of Spider-Verse? The villain behind all this is... Peter Parker? Oh great, another Spider-Man video game you ripped off. So his name is Wolf Spider. <laughs> Why is that his name? And the reason why he's evil? I don't know. They actually don't explain. His whole plan is the exact copy of Gama's plan, but instead of assembling the web warriors, they beat him with the power of goodwill. And he f explodes! And to top it off, Miles is finally back in his dimension, but decides to move his mom to Peter's dimension and just live there. Yep, they leave the whole world behind, leaving friends, family, insurance, Everything just because Milo likes it there. Okay, so maybe we should take a break now and- Are you kidding me? We get the Clone Saga now, although they call it the Spider Slayers. So, whatever. Peter and MJ find Ben alive and finds out he's a clone. Which was the results of Hydra experiments. Okay, I know the whole Jackal storyline is confusing and weird, but I didn't want Hydra being the main reason for everything happening in this show. Oh, but you know what else is stupid? Mary Jane still has a piece of the Carnage symbiote in her, and she becomes... The Ultimate Spider Woman! Mary Jane is an important character in Peter's life. She's one of the very few normal pieces of his life he could always come back to. While she doesn't have superpowers, she's the most helpful person. He could date all of these super women, but they're nothing compared to Mary Jane. And the most important thing about her is the fact that she's not a superhero. She's human, just like us. So they make her a superhero and throw everything relatable about her away. What the f***? Oh, and the best part is that she doesn't want to be a hero and go to college. But Peter says, screw that and be a superhero. That's right, kids. Screw your education and be a superhero. So Otto helps out and gets mad at Peter for not trusting him. With this guy, you need someone watching your back eight different ways. Perhaps you do well to remember that I have kept your true identity a secret, Peter Parker. Despite your prejudiced beliefs about me, I do have a code of honor. You know when and if I feel like it. Don't you? Dare talk to me like that. Octavius, act. I've given you new life, Norman. I've removed every imperfection and weakness. I've turned you into the true you. A monster. A grotesque. A goblin. My goblin. Now, now, Osborne. Is this any way to treat your doctor? Have you ever heard the term sacrificial lamb? Why did you say Hey! No one rang the recess bell? Come back here! Tell me the cure! Why don't you just go steal it from my lab? Where he stole my serum? You wanted this. But the consequences of separating Venom from its host not to be around for them. We've still got a ship to save. Cured or not, they can all burn when this craft destroys itself. Goodbye, Spider-Man. Octavius, assist me! That's your cue, Otto. Run to your master like a good eight-armed little doggy. He can wait. Yeah. I own you, mortal. Obey me! I can trigger him into a remote control destroyer with a mere two word cue. Carry him, Peter! <laughs> Not getting the joke. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Nanobots take control of your armor. So much promise. You could have been one of my Sinister Six, but you have failed me. You are no longer a person, but only a weapon that I wield. 
Now, eliminate Spider-Man! You dare betray Hydra? You tried to control me, Zola. A dangerous experiment. This is the result. You will not... Oh. Ah. Octopus! What did you do? I just turned you into my latest experiment. As a man of my word, I honored the deal we made, Spiders. But our partnership is now ended. Find your own way back from this tomb. Hey! Then reveals Ben has more clones, which then leads up to Kane, which if you remember, looks like this from the comics. Now it looks like this. Why? But who cares at this point? F this, we're at the last two episodes, so let's just get this over with. Peter is graduating from S.H.I.E.L.D. with no high school degree, let me remind you. But Otto in his new form threatens to hurt Aunt May if Peter doesn't give up being Spider-Man. So he gathers everyone he knows to beat the Sinister Six, which he puts in the same room. Then they end up trapping every superhero that shows up to the event and Doc Ock forces Peter to take a serum that strips some of his powers. So now the only way for him to get his powers back is from Oscorp. Which also reveals that Norman knew he was Spider-Man. So why bother wearing the mask at this point? It's also revealed that the same spider that bit him is still alive. And he easily gets his power back the second bite. Okay, bullsh**. The whole point of Peter getting bitten is that it was an accident, not destiny or any of that. It was just a random event that happened. The spider being alive is stupid because that thing died shortly after. And I didn't mention this in the last video, but making the spider part a bigger plot is also stupid too. It's just an accident and shouldn't be impossible to happen again. Literally, out of all the things you messed up about Spider-Man in this show, you somehow got the simplest one of them all wrong. Spidey easily beats the Sinister Six, which at this point I'm tired of seeing. But Doc Ock has one last gamble. He takes one of the animal serums and turns into a giant octopus. You can't make this up. What's even dumber is that after he beats him, Otto becomes a good guy. Like, out of one conversation, he decides to turn his life around. Oh, and guess what? Uncle Ben is alive, because at this point, I wouldn't be surprised. So, Spider-Man now teaches young superheroes and doesn't go to college. Oh, and for one more insult to injury, they try to do the classic spider signal. But instead of it being on his belt, it's on his chest. Just, that's it. I'm done. F*** this show. So yeah, that was Ultimate Spider-Man. As you can see, I still don't like this show. I can respect it for trying to do something different, but I feel like it lost direction halfway and went over the line. By taking out every single thing that makes Spider-Man relatable, you made this version of the character almost unrecognizable. Disney didn't wait around after ending this because by the next year they replaced this Spider-Man with the other one. It was so quick that the continuity of this universe started to fall apart. I will say, compared to when Marvel's Spider-Man ended with a whimper, this show left a legacy that many people remember. I still think Marvel can make another Spider-Man show, or at least bring back the good one. However, it's obvious they're gonna stick with the MCU. If you watch this entire video and still think it's a good show, then that's okay. You're entitled to your own opinion and should like something no matter what anyone says. This isn't Twitter. Well, until the next video I'm forced to make, or the next movie comes out, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.